<laughs> I'm Havila Workman. And I'm Curtis Workman. And we are Wander with the Workmans. And first of all, I thought we should introduce you. <laughs> oh, right, because I haven't been in any of the videos yet. I am the wife that he claimed he had, and now you have proof. See? Not a myth. Yes. It's not my girlfriend who lives in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we were talking about a topic uh, concerning RV living, and we thought we'd share it with you. And we were just kind of talking about the things that our parents and our family didn't get when we announced that we were going to go on the road. Mm -hmm. um, nobody ever said, well, we're not going because mom says we can't go. Or, right. or, or dad says we can't go, so we're staying and we're not going RVing. We're obviously right. adults some of the time. <laughs> <clears throat> but especially for people our age and younger who are considering this, family concerns and 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 making sure their their care is is acknowledged is is still a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so we were just kind of chatting about the the differences in our families and their mm -hmm. responses to our decision to take our life full time on the road. Um, and in some ways, they're they're similar families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're both um, Caucasian uh, from Southeast Idaho, uh, Mormon backgrounds, uh, mine is, is more immediate than Curtis's side, uh, middle class families, farming, uh, small communities in Idaho. So yeah, pretty similar. But there are some, some pretty big differences as well. Um, my family, I'm like sixth generation. Um, of living in the same 15 mile radius. Um, my family on both sides have been there for multiple generations, but on my, on my dad's side, I'm, I'm the sixth generation. Whereas your family, mm -hmm. both because of, of your father's occupation and, and their religion, are accustomed to traveling. Yeah, so my father uh, was born and raised in this little tiny town, population 200, you've never heard of it. Um, and then he joined the Marine Corps. And so we lived all over the world for 20 years, you know. Um, and then my parents being Mormon and my grandmother being um, Mormon also. So my parents went on a mission to Singapore. Um, my grandmother went on a mission to the state of Georgia, not the country. Um, she's also gone on missions to Salt Lake City. And then her farthest abroad field or uh, mission was Australia. Um, and she was over Which there. is the country, not the state. <laughs> Right. Yes. And um, <laughs> we were worried they were going to be confused about Georgia. And... Well, there, you know, that one can be confused. Right. Anyway, so my family is used to moving. Um, you know, my brother was in the Navy for a while and I don't know, we just lived a lot of different places and that was just kind of a, a normal thing until my dad retired and we moved back to where he grew up in Idaho, uh, which was a heck of a culture shock. Um, anyway, right. and so with the different backgrounds, our families reacted very differently to us wanting to hit the road. Right. So when when we told your family, there mm -hmm. was not, there was actually quite a bit of support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Because my parents are like, oh, have fun. My mother loves, hi mom, loves to go camping up in the mountains. I'm total Montana girl. That's where my heart is at is mountains and pine trees and, you know, lakes and rivers. And how could you not want to go do and, and live in that kind of world all the time, of course. And so um, my mother's like, yes, go. And I want to live vicariously through you. And this is going to be great. And, and then there was Curtis's family. Right, and my family was, <laughs> which they asked the ultimate question, which is kind of more of a, a, a launch pad or a jumping off point for every other question. They were like, why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would you want to do this? And, and in all reality, my father was probably the biggest one with that question because to him, life and, and, and the American dream and what you're supposed to do is get the job, get the car, get the house, have the kids, buy the insurance, go to the grocery store. That was what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And this lifestyle to him is is a total anathema. It, it, it is the opposite of anything. Mm -hmm. um, been able to kind of talk him into understanding it. And again, he kind of is of the opinion of like, well, you're an adult, you're going to do what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. But it yeah, he was the he was the biggest one. Um, but surprisingly enough, he was not the parent 
that surprised me with that question. <laughs> the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> because my, my mother for 30 years has had a job where mm -hmm. six months out of the year, they, her and her husband travel um, and, and they move from place to place doing their job. So just so you understand, his parents are divorced. So just to make that clear. We're not even going to pull out the parchment and try a family tree. Just, no. <laughs> it's complicated. But just Thank so you, you, Facebook. Understand. It's complicated. <laughs> but so, so my mom and my stepdad, they put 30, 40,000 miles on a vehicle in six months mm -hmm. with their job. And they do it in the middle of winter and they do it in the middle of Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And so for them to be like, why, why would you want to do this? Well, it, it was really shocking that they would even ask that question because they, I would have thought, and, and when I first approached them about this, I was shocked because I would have thought of my two sets of parents, they would be the ones that would get it. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe they thought that we were going to go to Wyoming in the middle of winter and they were like, why would you want to do that? We did that for 40 years and it's terrible. Maybe right. Trying to save us from ourselves. It was, right? yeah. So that, Just thought about that. that first question of, of why, um, was something that they didn't get. And for us, mm -hmm. there, it, obviously there were a multitude of reasons and we probably should do a totally separate video on those specific reasons. But that was the first thing that my parents and my family didn't understand was why, mm -hmm. why were we going to do this? And, and like I said, we had, we had plenty of reasons. We felt like it was the right time. We felt like it was a fun thing to do. My, my favorite answer is why not? Uh, yeah, we both work from home. Home can be wherever there's internet. So why not? Um, why does home have to be southeastern idaho in the middle of the lava fields and potato fields don't forget the sagebrush i'm you're right sorry and the sagebrush so then after that there were a, a couple of different questions that just seemed to keep keep coming up um mm -hmm. one of them was why was i giving up my community involvement that was mm -hmm. another thing that my our my friends our our family just couldn't understand. I was involved. I was on the city council. I was involved with Chamber of Commerce. I did several volunteering opportunities with veterans groups in the local school district and that kind of thing on top of work and everything. And so a lot of people just couldn't wrap their heads around this idea of like, well, you're doing all this stuff. You're building up this thing. Why are you leaving? Again, we're back to why. Mm -hmm. um, but why are you leaving all of this stuff behind? And it's not that I didn't enjoy those things. They're, they were very fulfilling, but at the same time, we looked at our lives and went, again, why not? And especially being this age and being able to go out mm -hmm. and, and do it. I was, I was really impacted by, by the story of a local politician. He was the county assessor. Longest serving politi elect, elected official in the state of Idaho ever. Um, had been in the position since the early 70s, mm -hmm. worked his entire life, served the community for his entire life, retired six months early so he could take cancer treatments and died six months after his official retirement date. And so that was just really impactful to me mm -hmm. to yeah. just go, okay, well, we can follow this traditional plan and that may be the reward at the end. We are lucky in that we have an opportunity to do it now to do it when now. we're young we're in fairly good health mm -hmm. you know and we we can travel because there's a lot of people like this this local uh, assessor who think okay well I will do that when I retire and right. that may never come right and so so that was that was a, a lot of the why I was willing to give up those things that people thought I was I was building into mm -hmm. was that you know the opportunity was there and so take it. Don't mm -hmm. don't sit back and, and wish or, or, or long for. Um, and so that was a, that was a big part of why I was willing to to step away from the city council, step away from the high school activities, you know, through the theater department, the junior miss program. Um, and we were we were doing good things. We were building building things through the chamber of commerce that the community mm -hmm. hadn't seen before and stuff like that. But there are capable people there who can continue those those efforts, and I can go off and we can enjoy this opportunity. And I think that it's important to realize that it's a lot of choices, that if you really care about building up your local community, then that's what you should stay and do. 
that's where that's where your heart is at that's what you should be doing with yourself and don't spend your whole life thinking oh well if only I traveled and if you want to travel go out and travel but don't spend your whole life man I wish I stayed it back in my community make a decision and and follow your heart but don't try to split it because it doesn't really work that well now one thing I you know apart from your family being mostly cool mm -hmm. with everything the one the one thing I remember is is there was some concern about how we were going to travel and specifically your grandmother mm, right at one point in time now this is my grandmother who went to Australia just putting that out there in like a, her 70s I think her early 70s I mean you know she was a traveler and she but and part of it was my mother I will say but the thing I'd like to point out is is that she she went somewhere that had a residency you know a, a residence some place for her to live. Oh, right, right. That right. kind of thing. So it was. Mm -hmm. it, it's a different style of travel to just go to another place, set up a home in a sticks and bricks kind of situation. Right. But your mom definitely did not help <laughs> in this. And it all starts with going to Wellington, Texas and planning our route. At some point in time, we had to travel what is known as the loneliest highway in America. That's actually its name. That's, it's not a joke. That's actually its name. And so... That was part of the traveling right at the beginning. And so my mom, who's like really into uh, planning and she wants to see where you're gonna go next and she wants to, like I said, live vicariously through this, uh, through us, um, was showing her mom, my grandmother, her iPad. And she's like, oh yeah, see, it's just over here. And she starts scrolling across with her, with her finger through the iPad and the map just kept going because she was zoomed in and so it looked like we were going to stay on the loneliest road in America for like 10 years and my grandmother's eyes kept getting bigger and bigger and she's like ah, what's gonna what happens if you break down and she was really I was like mom stop just stop but okay all right now we're panicking my grandmother cool right. um so I will have you know we didn't break down on the loneliest road in the world but or in America but um yeah that was definitely a concern <laughs> that my grandmother had was that we were going to break down somewhere and, and not be okay. But she didn't know about you. <laughs> you can fix anything. I, I That's try. Um, my secret plan. The There are about a million more questions that our families asked and didn't quite get at first. But mm -hmm. I think the, the takeaway from that experience in the planning is... It was important to us, at least, and I think it should be important to a lot of people to respect those concerns. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you're going to run into somebody out there who's going to tell you you're going to fail. We, I didn't have that in my family. I don't think you had that in your family. Yeah. But we had community members who were like, you're just going to be back here in six months. Go out there and fail. Come back and you'll learn your lesson. And those people, you can't care about their concerns yeah but for the people in your life who really matter mm -hmm. the it is important to to be able to talk to them about their concerns and, and help them feel comfortable because you want that relationship to continue right. and for me it was I stumbled and I fumbled through a lot of early explanations of why how what you know mm -hmm. and that kind of thing but it wasn't until I sat down and personally and I don't think I even told you I ever did this, was sat down and, and came up with a very concrete answer hmm, to no, why. Tell me that. To be able to confidently say, this is why I'm going on the road. Hmm. Not, oh, I kind of think this would be cool or this would be fun. When I could sit down and say, this is why. So you, you worked out your elevator pitch. Yes, yes. Got to make it between the fourth and the fifth floor or you're done. Um, <laughs> And so that is that is where it changes for me, and I think that's the piece of advice I want to get out is respect those concerns, but know that when you have a definite answer, that confidence will make those people in your life also confident. Yeah, yeah. When you're kind of stumbling and ooh, and, and I think the other thing that was really useful for us is that we already had jobs that mm -hmm. we did from home, so we could help people understand that a little easier um 
and even that was a little bit rougher than we expected it to be. When we first told people, people thought that we were like going to be out on the street corner. Hungry? <laughs> feed me? Yeah. We'll work for food. <laughs> yeah, my dad definitely had that moment where he was like, I, I, I didn't know you wanted to go play in a drum circle and wear Tevas. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm not chasing the Grateful Dead across the country. Um, <laughs> I'm going to experience the country and take my job with me um, right, and yeah. that kind of thing. So, yeah, but like I said, those are those are some of the things that our family stumbled on mm -hmm. when we first made this announcement. So I hope if you're considering this lifestyle that this helps you talk to those people in your life that you care about and want them to understand why and how and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. If you guys like what we're doing, Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. It's still there. It's it's probably never going to move. And now that I say that, YouTube's going to redesign itself. But right now, it's right down below us. So be sure to subscribe. Uh, once you do that, if you want to keep up with us uh, as soon as we release a new video, you can click on the bell icon. That will send you a notification. Also, on our, our shorter updates, you can find us on Instagram. We are Wander with the Workmans on Instagram, so give us a give us a follow there as well. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys down the road. Bye.